Hi ClassX friends, today I'm going to show you how to broadcast Zoom calls by using NDI and LiveBoard. So now I'm going to show you quickly the setup that you need to um, follow if you want to do this kind of production with LiveBoard. I have my LB station with LiveBoard, the graphics playout software, on board here and uh, in the same local network I have connected this laptop, which can also be a, um, a server, which will run Zoom Rooms. And then here we have the controller of Zoom Rooms, because it's on a, a separate device. And so this is all connected to the same local network. We have now started a Zoom meeting by using Zoom Rooms and I have uh, myself here and my colleagues who are connected to the Zoom Rooms inside the same Zoom Room. So on the controller here, I will be able to start the NDI stream. I go into the site and I will add an NDI output. Here I add Benedicta. On the second one, I add Joe, and on the third one, myself, which is the Zoom Room, let's say, main client. So now we are actually starting the NDI, and it also shows here in the upper left corner of my, uh, of my screen, it shows that NDI is now streaming out. And so I'll be able, since it is streaming in my local network, which is the same network that is connected to my LB station, so LiveBoard, Classics LiveBoard is on this uh, LB station, I'll be able to capture these NDI streams as video inputs and use them as graphic objects. That's it. Okay, this is my LiveBoard interface. So I'm going to, go to open now the video input manager and I will directly go and look for the NDI sources of my Zoom calls. Here I have video one. I will apply this. And so I'll find my first video stream, which is Benedetta. Okay. Okay, so the next one will be NDI again. Video 2, Giovanni with his green screen behind. We're going to see what this is for in a minute. The third one should be myself. This shows the NDI stream coming from the laptop, which is next to me and uh, which has Zoom Rooms, um, the application itself, the Zoom Rooms server on installed on it. So um, now I have set up these three streams. I can also rename them. I will call them Zoom 1, Zoom 2 and Zoom 3. And I will find them in my multi-view. So I have these three NDI streams actually going and uh, streaming all the time in my local network. I'm capturing them in real time over my LifeBoard video input. And now I can use them for um, as a graphics object for broadcasting these streams uh, either separately or also together. So the first thing I will do is uh, call in a plugin of video input source and uh, in the settings I will define, I can define uh, which source to use. I will fit the video so that I can resize, uh, resize it inside my positioning and it will get uh, the size that I define. Whenever I send this content on air, I can add, for instance, effects for it. I like a regular left. I will be able to, I could also crop it if I wanted to. Uh, so let's crop it, why not? Left 200, right 200, let's say. Okay, 
So I want to send now Benedetta on air like this and I have her cropped. Very good. Now I will add, let's say, Giovanni next to her in my, in my um, project. I'll actually, uh, I want to add an animated background to all this so that it doesn't look so black like this one. So, this can go looping and be the background and the positioning environment. So now I have uh, Benedetta over my background, right? Because the background is uh, visual priority 24 while the video input of, Be of Benedetta is 50. Okay, I'll add another video input by just duplicating this by pressing control. And so I have a second video input. It is already selected and I will put it to zoom too. So this is now uh, Giovanni and uh, I will put him here to the right hand side, just next to uh, Benedetta, like this. And since he has this uh, nice green background that I added, uh, that uh, he's using behind him, I can use this uh, video input in a very particular way. I can go and filter away the green from Giovanni. So I double click here on my video input multi view and open the uh, video input manager so there he goes this is the video input manager of uh, the input one which is called zoom 2 we gave it this name i will enable video processes for it and uh, add the green screen filters so these are the default filters i can uh, work on them in order to have a better green screen okay there we are now we have removed the green from Giovanni's background and uh, so we can see that we can adjust uh, all sorts of uh, uh, parameters here in order to green screen away correctly the green screen from behind our interviewed and so we have now Giovanni with uh, transparency so I run now my background so now we have here our uh, two video inputs and I will run them. Here we have Benedetta, here we have Giovanni. And uh, so, uh, if I want to, I can add myself as a background to them both. And so I will have a interview of, uh, well, three people. So let's add the last one. And I will add myself as a video input switcher. So I also so show you the newest plugin that we have in LifeWord number eight, uh, which is the video input switcher. So the switcher shows me here in the preview uh, all, um, all video inputs that I select and uh, here uh, I can define for it the correct visual priority. I want to stay behind my colleagues but in front of uh, the background also because the video input switcher itself can be uh, resized like this and so maybe I want to do a sort of picture-in-picture -picture effect of it. Okay, so uh, here I am. So I will now take myself with a cut and uh, send myself on ear like this. Here I am. Okay, uh, a little bit behind my colleague Benedetta. Like this. Okay, so uh, the video input switcher has the great opportunity of making transitions that we have preset and uh, we can do them uh, like this with an interview 3d uh, mix interview like this so if i want to take myself uh, uh, to, to take Benedetta after myself i will select this transition that i just loaded with, which is a coral cg template and take and so we are now together on the same on the same uh, screen I will take away this so it's not so <laughs> it's uh, not bothering us and here we have uh, the opportunity also to do some uh, switching going back either back to my input so if I go left I will show my input again as a full screen or like this I can go right and um, in the bar up here, 
I also have the opportunity if I have an interview and so I have to manage the audio of these two streams um, then I can enable let's say I can balance the audio more towards the one or the other stream so that it is uh, louder than the other and so I can make sure that uh, the audio is correctly managed. If you look here at this little, uh, the, the input multi view, you will see that there is a small sound bar, VU meter, going up and down, and we also have it for Benedetta and Giovanni. Please say something. Okay, so we have it for Giovanni. So you do not need to have Zoom installed on the broadcast engine, so the, so the live board engine you have it on the local network and you have someone doing the management of the calls uh, who's using the controller and uh, the Zoom Rooms application separately. So the graphics technician only has to do the management of the um, MDI streams and use them as, as graphic uh, objects. Okay, so thanks a lot for <laughs> watching and I hope that you will have fun using Zoom as uh, a broadcast um, object in your gra graphic system by Classics. Goodbye. Okay, let's have a look at the Zoom application and um, account setup. So make sure that you have your account. You go into the Zoom download page. You look for Zoom rooms, for conference rooms and touch screen displays. And uh, please do not download this, but do download this. So the 64-bit client is absolutely necessary for the NDI streams to correctly work and to have their audio embedded as well. So apart from that, you go then back to your account. You go into Zoom rooms in room management and then you select your zoom room we have a free account here it shows me that i have a computer and a tablet set up with a zoom rooms um, controller and zoom rooms application i go into the settings so i can go into the meeting tab and uh, scroll down until i find the ndi part where i can turn on the ndi um, stream possibility which is here allow the NDI usage we turn it on from here and uh, this is mostly it from here so if we go into the support page that I have opened here if you look for NDI it will show you this page and uh, look at it go through it uh, in the pre requisites they have uh, said well listed quite a few things but they haven't listed that you need to install the la latest version of ndi tools in the workstation like uh, in my case in our case we had the laptop so you need to install the ndi tools as well so that ndi and ndi bridge is present that's how it works so after that uh, you should have really all the tools for doing uh, what we've seen in uh, this little demo. And uh, well, if any questions, just let us know at Classic Support. Cheers.